major parts of Europe paving the way for international action. Be sure ready to have a good time on Sports Update. Welcome to the show. My name is Marco Tab. As usual, I've got my ride or fly right here with me. To your Good morning, Mark. You look good today. Yeah, thank you. You Absolutely. look good too. You look fly. Are you going somewhere from here? <laughs> no. You sure? <laughs> yeah. You've been doing some sneaky links. Oh, no, no, no. no. Okay, no problem. It's all good. <laughs> Let's get on to the first story now. World number one, Iga Schwate, continued her dominance over Coco Gauff to reach the French Open final, move closer to a third straight title at Roland Garros. Now, Poland's Schwartek broke golf in the first game of the match and, apart from briefly losing serve in the second set, retained control to win 6-2, 6-4. And, of course, in the other semi-final, Jasmine Paolini beat unseeded 17-year-old Mira Andriva 6-3, 6-1, to set up a final clash with Iga Schwartek. Now, Tuyasi, I know you are very passionate about tennis and I understand the feeling that comes with uh, the dominance with the females, yeah? I was particularly not happy that uh, my Coco left, <laughs> I'm telling you. I, well, I, was, I was really rooting for her. Yes, she's young. She's got promising years ahead of yeah, her. Of course. But you would expect that. You know, we've seen tournaments, tournaments like this where sometimes surprise happens. Yeah, sure. I was hoping for that shock surprise, but it didn't happen at all. Nigerians would say tennis is a winch sport, something like that, because <laughs> expect anything. Just look at the 17-year-old unseeded girl um, who defeated, um, what's her name now? Um, Sabalenka knocked out Sabalenka. I was, you know, hoping and expecting a Sabalenka Iga yeah, Swatek kind to of final, but we're not seeing that Sabalenka is out. Rybakina is out. But this time around, Iga Swatek, she is a monster. She's going on and on and on and on. She's not even slowing down. Mm -hmm. When I saw the matchup with Coco Golf, you know, much as yes, Coco has done something at first Grand Slam, U.S. Open yeah. on home soil, the home advantage. Yeah. I don't want to be too disrespectful to Coco, but I already knew that this was a mismatch. Mm. I, I don't think she stood any chance okay. against Iga Swatek. All right, well, so talking about the men, I, I, I particularly was happy that Carlos actually uh, pulled through. Yeah, um, like I always call him, I call him the right-handed Rafael Nadal. <laughs> Powerful, <laughs> pacey, and all of that. You know, all the brutes you expect from a guy, mm. you know, who has this passion for tennis and wants to emulate his Spanish um, legend, that's Rafael Nadal. He's doing so well. Is in the final now. He will face um, Alexander Zverev, one person who knocked out Rafael Nadal early mm. in this tournament, and, I, and, and I'm so delighted to see both of them play together in the yeah. final. One one thing for Zverev, why? Because he has always not been in the mix lately. Yeah. You know, he had promise. You know, after since the likes of the big three had, had gone, but he has now he has never lived up to that promise. Mm -hmm. But this time around, he's in another final. I'm happy to see him there. But Carlos Alcaraz Garcia, one man who is in form, one man who when it comes to finals, it would give you at least that's 80% chance that yeah. I would win or I would take this final. So you advise me to put my money on him, right? Well, sort of. He's done it before. So <laughs> I would rather go with someone who has done it before. So for the, for the female round, are you, are you actually outright giving it to Iga to actually uh, to, 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 take, to take that title? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> are you expecting, uh, what, what's her name now? It's, it's, Jasmine it's Paulini. Igua. No, it's Igua. It's Iga. I expect that to win another Grand Slam. All right, moving on now. Just after suffering another devastating knockout from Zhe Yang, the Chinese power Deontay Wilder has been accused of domestic violence by fiancé who has granted restraining order against star boxer. In her application, Swift has accused Wilder of choking her at least five times since 2018. She also claims he spat on her several times and even said she was nearly suffocated when Wilder shoved her face into a pillow in a fit of rage for an extended period of time. So you see, I am particularly sorry for this brother. I, I feel that that fight against Tyson Fury was the end of him. Yeah, the that third fight one. he took up, absolutely. Yeah. And not even the third one, the very moment he decided to compete against Tyson Fury, oh, that was the no, beginning no. of his downfall no, I, for me. I don't think so. I'm telling you, look, listen. There's nothing wrong with taking a challenge. Look, the, the first one was a draw, right? See, let me tell you something. Yeah. Wada has been docking. Mm. for a long time. Mm. He saw a, a, a Fury that was down. Mm. Fury was actually in his lowest mo at yeah. his lowest moments, and he felt, look, I can take, his, take my chance. So, my so is there anything wrong with that? Well, he, he was surprised. He was shocked. Well, that, that's Fury just, gave him a surprise, you, you, you and this is what's not, happening to him now. You will not know what you will get if you don't try to find out. Uh, and that's it. He tried to, you know, he wanted that challenge. The money that came with it as well, minus the old defeat, the trilogy and all yeah. of that, the money that came with it, the fame and all of that, it's still on Wilder not to have, you know, won any well, the money. But the money might be going up in flames anytime soon now. Well, because, let's just uh, see how uh, this... Your uh, fiancé is saying, look, you have to add the, the, he's going to pay. Because yeah. now uh, they're saying Wilder should retire. Why is it that this whole acquisition is coming out full force mm. now that the guy's at the end of his career? You know, that, that's, that's where the angle I'm going to where... Uh, I won't say I feel for him because, of course, she would definitely not be lying. Um, if you are a, 
a violent person, mm -hmm. you should not have any pity yeah. so, to some extent. But at the same time, um, <laughs> boxing wise, yes, boxing yeah. wise, yeah. it lost to Gilles Jean. Disciplined. The, the, uh, five versus five. And it's coming at a very bad time where mm -hmm. he's at a all time low, like yeah. he's really, really down, losing another fight to Gilles Jean. True. In the fifth round, for that matter, you know, the, the old great Deontay yeah. Wilder that yeah, we know, yeah. the bronze buzzer, what yeah. they call him now. Bronze bomber. Bomber, thank you. you know? <laughs> and now this is hitting him again. This is going to be something that would. I, re I really don't know how he will come back from this, but yeah. he, he definitely can't come back. Just sort it out, apologize, just like we did yes. he has been doing so far, well, so he, good. He's, he's going to part with some money. I'm, oh, definitely, I'm definitely. Yeah. When it comes to divorce, you will take <laughs> a big hit. <laughs> All right, now the Super Eagles remains winless in Group C of the 2026 FIFA World Cup qualifier after a 1-1 draw against South Africa. Mm. Isaiah Dilibashu came to the rescue with a re equalizer, missed chances and a crucial refereeing error as appeals for a penalty fell to deaf ears denying the Super Eagles maximum points. So you see, well, I've got my very, very uh, interesting guest uh, standing by uh, on Zoom, Ibuko Aloko. is a football podcaster. Ibuko, can we uh, clearly have you now quickly? All right. Ibuko, how are you doing this morning? I'm very good. I'm very good. Fantastic. Good to see you. Good to hear from you once again. Fantastic. Yeah. Now, I, I know yesterday we had uh, a brief conversation after the first half. You told me strictly it was a disappointing first half. So I could imagine what rage you're coming with this morning. And uh, so many people are already, you know, trying to uh, blame Finidi George. I, I feel it's too early. This is his first game. And this is the first time he's assembling players for a very competitive encounter. Why don't we just cut him some slack and see where he's going with the vision he's got for the team. So what's your standpoint from everything you saw yesterday? Well, the pressure that comes with the national team coach, I think that's why they are being paid about 40 to 45 million naira every month. <laughs> um, it's more like you are not doing the job alone. You get, you have, you know, Nigerians they are always telling you what to do. And I think yeah, Finiti coming out to say that we should allow himself and the assistant to do their job is to show you that other coaches have also been under immense pressure. I think Finidi can only talk because maybe he's, you know, he's an indigenous coach. He's someone who has played for Nigeria. He knows that he's part of us. He is our own. Maybe he's, you know, the communication will be easier compared to the foreign managers. But I think yesterday, don't forget, the whole of AFCON, we, we, we played more like a three at the back, you know, three, five, two or thereabout. And uh, we had to go back to the four, you know, back line, which for me, I think some of these players might not be used to the national side again. I think Semi Ajayi was part of the setup at AFCON. Um, Calvin Bassi as well, Osai, Bright, and, and the rest of these guys. But that's not enough excuse for them to have a terrible first half show um, in front of your own fan base. In fact, the, the, the guys in Uyo, they came in all out for the Spikes of Nigeria. And uh, the second half wasn't really, you know, Good as expected as well, but I think they upped, you know, the 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 the, the pressure on South Africa and they got that goal. Uh, but I think uh, Mark, for me, generally, uh, it's still a very long way in the World Cup qualifiers. Just three games already. We have one on Monday. I think Nigeria should be patient with Finney the judge. It, 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 it wasn't look as if it wasn't like as if we lost yesterday. It was just more like a draw, and I think it's a fair result. We'll have won that game if there was a VAR call in that game yesterday. For a foul um, against um, what's his name again, Ademola Lukman. But well, you know what it is. It's what it is. When you don't take your chances and you don't score it, you get to be punished as well. All right. Now I, I understand that uh, we are actually at a, at a crossroad at the moment because yesterday's game we were condemned to win that match to avoid putting ourselves through unnecessary pressure. Now uh, from the from the setup you saw yesterday, I understand. Sometimes you think these players, uh, because of international duties, coming back to the national team could have actually told on their fatigue, you know, their fitness. And uh, did you see any form of serious, did you think the seriousness was on the part of the fact that they were also, they've gone through a, a hectic uh, club period and that's why they didn't really put up that energy that was needed yesterday? Well, <laughs> if you ask yourself, how many, how many Nigerians like start more like week in, week out for their club side, like play a lot of games in the Super Eagles setup? I think we really cannot mention maybe maybe ten, maybe nine or there about. I think that's not enough excuse. Uh, players like Boniface was has been injured almost all through the season. Came back at the end of the season, which I thought the coach would have given him a starting bet. To be honest, because this was one of the guys that got to the camp so early 
you know, he prepared so well for this game. And I was very surprised that he didn't get his starting belt. No disrespect to Paul Odoachu, who has had a fantastic season as well. Um, I think he also deserves to start. But, you know, when we don't get results, in hindsight, it, it looks as if, you know, the coach made the wrong decision. But to be honest, the setup wasn't bad. Uh, Dele Bashir is someone who also, uh, you know, his top side has already scored about eight goals. So these are guys that have got the stats. These are guys that have got the ability to start for the Spikers right. of Nigeria. And when Finiti Dog was being employed, he said that, don't forget, any player that is in form, any player that is in his right, you know, abilities to play for the Spikers will obviously play. So this man is going based on merit, not just names. So I think we should cut him some slack. The players, for me, they did what they could do yesterday. Yes, you might say fatigue from this season, but that's not enough excuse for me because the South Africans as well, they also are in a league side. You know, they are in a league set yeah. In fact, I even feel that the South Africans even play more games than the Spikers of Nigeria because, you know, most of them play at home. Yeah. And, you know, my, my, my melody sundowns and the rest of them. Yeah, guys, true. you know, I think for me, we can't say fatigue. It would be it would be very dishonest of us to bring in fatigue to that game. Mm -hmm. I think it's just more of maybe first game in a long time, you know, first competitive game in a long time. Like I said, let's cut them some slacks and let's hope that on Monday they get maximum points against the Okay, okay. now be before I let you go uh, quickly, I understand that uh, pockets of tweets yesterday and some reactions on Twitter uh, actually suggested it will be again. The name came up again for some kind of reason. And uh, they're clamoring that uh, Nigeria should actually begin to look for a natural 10 that Iwobi cannot really deliver in that role that he is in. I saw, uh, you know, some flashes of uh, greatness from him yesterday, but it wasn't just outrightly outstanding from his perspective. So, I mean, uh, do, do, you think, uh, do you think otherwise on, on concerning Iwobi as that's that player that should do the magic in the middle? It would be unfair to to agree with whoever has said that. To be honest, um, I think I watched it will be a Fulham, Fulham the, all through the season, and I can tell you the same position he's been playing for the was the same thing he plays at Fulham as well. So uh, it's more of how well can your attackers, you know, connect with passes from the midfielders. I think that's a lot of questions to be asked. You know, it will be drives the ball in, tries to send in pass, tries to find the striker with his pass, a winger and the rest. This guy, for me, I think he covers a two, you know, enough grounds for us to start saying that maybe we start looking for a proper number 10. It will be, for me, in the last three, four years, has changed his position. He doesn't play from the wings. He doesn't play, you know, from the middle. When I mean the middle, he doesn't play as a number nine anymore. He's someone who plays more in the midfield. So why then are we saying that we should start looking for another number 10? I think, for me, if we have strikers who understands, you know, what... People, players like Wobi can bring it to, you know, to the team. I think they will connect with him very well. I, I watch Muniz, you know, at Fulham. That's the, stri the striker for Fulham. How he connects well with Wobi's passes and the rest. I think for me, it's quite unfair, you know, to put Wobi under the bus. There are a lot of players that didn't really play well yesterday as well. Bringing in uh, Wobi as well to this, to this top uh, is quite unfair, man. It's quite unfair. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Ibuku. Thanks for always actually hacking into our call in time of calling you. We appreciate your presence. Thanks. Always pleasure. Thank you. All right. I, I think uh, let's qu quickly display the other African qualifiers results on the screen so we can have uh, a bit of some kind of banter right here with my very fantastic colleague. All right. We have the Guinea Bissau against Ethiopia ended in a goalless draw. Egypt defeated Burkina Faso 2 1. Mauritania were defeated at home by Sudan. Senegal 1 1 against the Congo. Benin defeated Rwanda by a long goal. Libya. Uh, you know, uh, defeated Mauritius by two goals to one. Algeria suffered a home defeat against Guinea by two goals to one. Malawi, 3-1 against Sao Tome and Principe. And, of course, Mali also suffered a home defeat against Ghana. Ghana actually ran away with that victory. Uh, to your see, yeah. it's clear. Things are not looking so good for mm -hmm. the Super Eagles with that result yesterday. Yeah, we've put ourselves but in a very precarious position. Always. Three matches, three draws. We are fifth or so on the table. Sorry, yeah. fourth. There fifth about. Or they're about on the table, and we love this maths, mathematical calculation. We're Every trying time. To, trying to lean on another team or another country to do us a favor so that we can bump <laughs> forward and all of those things. It's tiring. I know. And when you look at, I don't want to say we have great players, fantastic players, all right? Mm -hmm. But we have decent players. We okay. have average players that they can do the job. Mm -hmm. They are effective enough 
to do the job. When you look at the crop of players we have in Africa, mm. I think Nigeria has the most talents mm. when you look at the squad. And talk of Boniface, who had a fantastic season with Bayern Leverkusen. Talk of Le Ademola Lukman, Lukman, the first African to score. A hat -trick. Hat -trick. In and the Europa League. League. So what's going on? Wow. Like, what is going on? It will be, I, I, I'm glad um, Aluko mentioned that. I don't think Luobi should be singled out. I'm one person who always criticize it will be but yesterday he had a decent game yeah, yeah. he was there to pick up the pieces yeah. the loose ball he was just doing his job doing his job he, cleaning he, up he provided the assist for um dele bashiru yeah. and, and a very very well taken goal at the same time too dele bashiru is a, is a number 10 but was oh. being played on the wings but all of these things you want to blame the coach you want to i think the only players i will always want to blame the coaches okay. why paul or not restarted all right, well, Chelsea have signed full-up defender Tosin at Darabio on a free transfer with a 26-year-old joining the Blues on a